Hello everyone, Steve Lentz here. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of an introduction to non-directional strategies. Um, I've been with uh, this company since 1998. You should know that Discover Options is the educational arm of Option View Systems. And so we promoted this presentation as a way of introducing folks to Option View and some of the capabilities as well as the Discover Options mentoring program. And in that context, what we're going to do is uh, give you a little bit of an introduction to uh, a pretty complex subject, which is non-directional options trading strategies. Now, just read this disclaimer. Presented material today is for educational purposes only. Should not be construed as personalized financial advice. And any kind of past results we represent are not necessarily indicative of future performance. Okay, so I've been with the company since 1998, and in that time we've seen the market change a lot. And and I've talked to, you know, when I was I started out in sales and then went into managing money, running some accounts as a CTA, and then we went into mentoring and I primarily do research and uh, and presentations like this and and some writing and and along the way I have spoken to thousands of options traders both uh, you know the you know just hobbyists and also professionals and and I guess the um, uh, one of the questions that comes well here's let me just give you a little bit of a just a little bit of taste of what we offer here in our and then I'll I'll ask the rhetorical question about what do professionals do? But in our mentoring program, um, this year has so far been outstanding for the strategies that we have had for many, many years. And that is, in, in our level three program, we teach a total of, uh, well, we teach three primary strategies and some variations on one of them. And here are the monthly returns so far this year. These are hypothetical returns that I run through every month. We have a clear set of rules, and all our students and all our mentors use these principles we teach, and, but then also in the management of their own money and then, and then managing the money of others as well. Um, everyone's a little different, but, we, but what, what I do is every month I get together with our level three students uh, in, a, in a presentation called Inside Wire. And what we do is is we go over a hard set of rules just robotically going through um, uh, for that particular month how those rules would have worked out with our strategies and so far this year you can see it's just outstanding these are monthly returns on the capital required to implement that strategy all right and just outstanding so far this year now not every month is like you know what you see here certainly but all in all, we've had very good results. And what we would do in, in level three, we teach these strategies, we walk you through homework. I'm going to talk about the mentoring at the end of the presentation, okay? But let me just ask just a rhetorical question, and perhaps you guys already know, and I'll tell you a little bit about my experience in being here. What strategy to professional do the professional option traders employ? They're out there, the professionals. There's the guys that work on the floor down in the bottom left, and then there's an even much larger group that work off the floor in offices all over the globe. What types of strategies are these options traders employing? Because someone's trading an awful lot of options, I'll tell you that. The volume has been rising over the years, over the, over the decades, they've been just, it's just exploding in options volume. What in the world are they doing in what strategies are, are they using? Are they all just buying calls and puts directionally? Well, no. No, there's two classes of professional involvement in options trading. First of all, I'm going to call the first one overlays on long holdings. And this gobbles up a huge amount of the volume that we see. And there's various things you can do. If you're a fund, a mutual fund, or, or, or you know, any kind of a money manager of, 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 of managing money at all, mon you know, managing accounts. These are some things, there, there's a few things you can do that gobbles up a lot of options volume. If you have long holdings, long stock holdings, ETFs, any kind of long holdings, and so many funds do today, what they do are, uh, is, is they come in and they do covered call overlays. 
all right, various types of algorithms where they're selling calls against their long holdings. Either specific stock options, they're selling specific calls on the stock that they hold, or they could be also doing just selling SPX calls on their entire portfolio. And they might have algorithms that they're running where they're selling calls and then buying them back right away and rolling them over in various predefined planned rollovers of their covered calls. Uh, yeah, I'm asked if I am recording. Yes, I am. I am recording. The red light is blinking there, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> so, and we have, and I'll tell you, we and then we have uh, uh, clients that do this kind of things. So one of our mentors does this. He has a covered call algorithm that he helps out folks, you know, some of his clients that have long holdings, he consults with them on their covered call overlays. Another one is caller overlays. That is, not only are you selling covered calls, you're also then buying protective puts. And we have clients that would do this for entire funds. I can think of one client we had, he had a billion dollar fund with an insurance company and they came to him and said, listen, we need you to please, uh, uh, you, know, you know, give us and consult with us on giving us the best option overlay on top of this billion dollar long holding that we have. What to do? What calls should we sell? What puts should we buy? How do we time that? And they needed consulting on that. And so our client had Option View, and he just plugged in that billion dollar portfolio into Option View, and he went to town and come, coming up with a good plan to then create a, a caller overlay. Now, why would you do these overlays? Why would professionals want to do this? Well, there's two reasons. One, over the long run, when you include bearish periods of time, you're going to enhance long-term yields by having some kind of overlay on top of it. Because if you buy protective puts and the market goes down harsh, okay, you're going to be protected there with those long puts. And when you look at the yields in the long run, inclusive of those bearish periods, your yields will be higher using an overlay like that as opposed to not using an overlay. All right, when you include those bearish periods of time. All right. Now the other thing you find when you use these overlays is you find that your returns are going to be less volatile. So if the market goes up, you know, real fast, yeah, you're not going to make that as much as you would if you had no overlay, but then when it goes down, you're not going to lose as much either. And so what turns it what what happens is that the volatility of your returns is greatly reduced and in the world of of hedge funds and mutual funds and any kind of fund holdings, you know, volatility of returns is a big, big deal. And having a, an, an options, a derivative overlay like this can really, really help. So a lot of the volume goes into that. Now, besides that, what other class of professionals, what are they doing? What are the folks doing that exclusively only trade options and they're managing money in some kind of various programs? Well, this is, the, this is where we get into the non-directional premium selling. And in, my, in, in, in studying the market and participating in it, and, and, in, and I, had, I, I managed our commodity trading advisory program here years ago, this is what everyone's doing. That, that is a professional that stays around a long time, year after year after year. They're selling option premium from a non-directional perspective, meaning that you can make money if the market goes up or down. It doesn't really matter. All right, That's what we mean by non-directional. And there's folks doing that, commodity trading advisors. I ran our, our uh, uh, program here years ago. We were selling out of the money calls and puts on the S&P futures and swing trading the E-minis. Right, that was our program. And we had positive returns. Registered investment advisors, hedge funds. We have clients, and some of our mentors are involved in that class of folks that are, are managing money using non-directional type strategies. And finally, individual investor and traders like perhaps yourself. All right, that, that, and we have professionals that are doing that. They're, or, they're basically just managing their own money from home, full-time trading options, and this is primarily the thing that they do. That's my observation 
Um, of course, it's difficult to take a complete survey exactly what it is they're doing primarily in their full-time trading endeavors, but I'm telling you that the pros are into basically into these types of categories. Aside from that, if you have a professional options firm, what are they doing? If they're not doing this, well, they're professional market makers then. It's seldom you're going to see an options trading firm, uh, full-time professional managing money that's, uh, that's doing it successfully, doing something other than than either being a market maker or selling premium non-directionally like that. So um, if, you, if this is where you want to go, then this is the place you want to be. Because that's what Option View is about, is about giving you the tools to arrive at that kind of a place. All right, so as we give you this introduction to this type of trading, there's four concepts that are really required for your understanding right now for today. All right. Now, there's obviously a lot of topics that we can discuss, and, and of course, we have 28 different uh, uh, mentoring classes for for our mentors to teach, and we group them into you know we have them in levels of was seven each. But for today, we need to cover these four concepts before I can explain to you the actual strategies. All right. First, it's if, and I assume I'm talking to a few beginners out there. Or maybe you've you've gone down the world of options and you know just enough to know that you're dangerous, all right? And that's fine. Everyone's there at some point. You know just enough to be dangerous, and you don't want to be dangerous to yourself and others. So you're here for more information. That's awesome. But these are the concepts we have to have for today: intrinsic and extrinsic value. That's time premium. The notion of implied volatility. I want to make sure we understand theta. And we have to understand how to read those risk graphs that perhaps you've seen and may not understand. We're going to go over that in detail so that you can look at one and instantly understand what's going on there. Then we're going to get to the strategies themselves. Today we'll look at a condor or an iron condor, iron butterfly, and calendar spreads. I'm calling them earnings calendars because we like to do our calendars around earnings if we're going to do calendar spreads. Okie dokie. All right, yeah, now those of you that are not beginners and you know all this, my apologies, this was really marketed as an introduction. And hopefully, hopefully you'll see something here in Option View that strikes your fancy and we'll get into the earnings thing down the road that's a bit more advanced in the earnings calendar. So those of you more advanced, please you know, bear with us as we bring everyone else up to speed within just a few minutes here. All right, intrinsic and extrinsic value. Let me get my little pen. All right. Grabbing my pen. Uh, let's see. There it is. Perfect. Okay, now this is the options matrix in option view. Let me just direct your attention. We're in columns here. We have the expiration dates, whether it's a weekly or monthly option, we can't really see in this screen, but those are the expiration dates. We have then the calls on the top half and the puts on the bottom half. If the spider is at 211 and a half, all right, then the strike, we're going to call it at the 211, is going to be the at the money right now. Although the price is right in between 211 and 212, we're going to defer to the one that has the highest level of time premium. So if an option strike is above 211 and a half, these are considered what we call out of the money. All right, if they're lower, than that, then they're considered in the money. See that? All right, now down in the puts. 211 and a half puts the 211 te technically out of the money. So we drift out like this. Those, these are the out of the money options. And if they're higher than 211 and a half, these are considered in the money puts. Now, if the if the 210 put, for example, is selling at a buck 38. All right, and the 211 is at 170. Okay, remember where's the strike price? It's at 211 and a half. Look at this. The 212 is at 209. All right, now the 211 is out of the money. All of that 170 being out of the money is considered time premium or extrinsic value. 
all of the out of the money puts are such that the, all of that premium is considered extrinsic time premium. It's out of the money. If the market doesn't move, all of that will go away. It's time premium that, that will be reduced to zero. Now watch this. When we go in the money in the put to the 212, if the price is at 209 and that 212 is 50 cents in the money, 50 cents is considered intrinsic value. The other $1.59 would be considered the time premium or the extrinsic value. All right? And the time premium here is what is most important because that time premium is what is being ascribed to the likelihood of the market moving in a certain direction and the likelihood that that option will expire in the money or not. So, and that is as a premium seller, we're most focused on selling time premium. We want to sell the time premium for a high level and buy it at a low level. Okay? So, those are concepts we have to have in the calls. If it's at 211, then 211 and a half, then the 211, is that in the money or out of the money? That's considered an in the money option. An in the money option. And if the price is at 219, okay, and the price is at 211, $1.69 of that is considered the extrinsic, and the rest is going to be considered then the, intr the uh, uh, intrinsic value. Okay, and then all this goes to extrinsic. Got it? Now, the extrinsic value, the time premium, all right, can be really high or really low. If there's an expectation the market is going to move a lot, that time premium is going to grow really, really high. And in the world of options trading, there's a way that we use to calculate how expensive an option is. I mean, if I told you that an option had a dollar time premium, well, that, you know, you wouldn't really know whether that's expensive or not. That could be on a $2 option, and this is a deep in the money strike we're talking about, or that dollar could be, well, in the spider, price 211, and an out of the money call. If I told you an option had time premium of a dollar, that doesn't tell you how expensive it is. We have to relate it to something we call we call it implied volatility. It's the volatility of the market or the underlying asset that is implied by that time premium. That dollar, that dollar oh five, is implying in this particular case by using the Black Scholes model and backing into it. Okay. That dollar five is implying an annualized move of 9.5%. An annualized move, the first standard deviation of the annualized moves would be 9.5% annualized move. That's the, that's the volatility implied by that dollar five. Now look, let's go down into the in the money options. Look at this. Here's a dollar six. For just a penny more of time premium, because it's an in the money option, and when you black, you know, when you go through the Black Scholes model, okay, that dollar six in that situation being that far in the money, in that you know, it, it, in that particular case, it's it's um, farther in the money than the other one was out of the money. That's implying a move of a eleven point eight percent. So that's a more expensive option by quite a bit than this one here. Do you see that? All right, so implied volatility tells us how expensive an option is. So when we're going to refer to MIV, now we say MIV or IV for short, that's the I implied volatility of the midpoint between bid and ask. So behind this market price, you have a bid and an ask of each option. The midpoint is what we're using to calculate that implied volatility for, okay? All right, so let's go on to the next foundational uh, uh, item, theta. Theta. This is one of the Greeks. Perhaps you the Greeks. T is for time decay. Um, uh, as theta is 
for the Greeks. Theta starts with T. T is time decay. That's an easy way to remember. In an option view, you can dial up the theta for each option real easily. And now what is this telling you? All right, this is the dollar amount that that option is going to lose with today's passage of time. All right, so here's an option that costs $2.19. That option controls how many shares? A hundred. So that option to purchase it would cost $219. All right, in one day, with today's passage of time, in theory, now this is all the, the, the theory using the Black-Scholes model, in theory, that option will decline in value from one day of passage of time by $6.07. From $219, if you spend $219, that, there's going to be about $6.07 that will come off of that. I want to show you here, you can go farther out in time. Here is one that has 30 days to go. The daily time decay there is $4.64. Here's one that's five dollars and eighteen cents. Can you see how the daily time decay grows with each? That's this is the same. This is a call at that two eleven strike. As we go farther out in time, the daily time decay goes down, and if you come closer in time until there's just sixteen days left, that time decay is growing. The time decay is growing. Now, as premium sellers, as option sellers, we're very concerned about daily time decay, how much money we're going to put in our pocket with today's passage of time. And so we want our daily time decay to be positive. So if we were to sell this option for $2.19, or and we acquire $219, then... After a day or two, after a day, we will have pocketed, in theory, $6. After two days, we'll have pocketed something over $12, etc. If we sell that option for $219, if we pocket $219, after a few days, we've already acquired $12 in time decay. Not too bad. Now, it's not quite that easy, but I think you get the picture. We want to sell high and buy low. Okay. So well, that's something that we just need to understand, and it's the concept of theta. Finally, let's talk about reading risk graphs, and then we're going to get to the actual strategies. In option view, you can propose a trade. Come up here to the Analyze button and click this, and it's going to take you to a risk analysis screen just looking just like this. And For those of you beginners, maybe you've seen these in magazines, and, and, and years ago in the mid-'90s when I was starting to read and study, I would first look at options and read about them and try and ascertain knowledge from the narrative. And then I would see these graphs to the side and go, eh, you know, I want to read the narrative first. And then later I realized how important these were. And you really have to understand visually what's going on so that you get a better feel for the, the, the full strategy being employed. So let me just walk you through this real quick. This is a long call that we've proposed to purchase. The x-axis represents the price of the underlying spider. The y-axis represents the uh, dollar amount of your, of your profit or loss. There's a zero break-even line here. Everything above this is gain. Everything underneath this is loss. Then we have three lines here. This is today's risk line. So that you could see, and we're focused on the T plus zero line, today's risk line, so that if today the market went up to $213.60, Spider went you know, up $2.10 from 211 and a half, we would make $130 on that. That's a 1% move in the underlying. We bought that option for $220. We're now up $130. Okay, we're up well over 50% of our, that from a yield perspective. We're just doing outstanding right there. You see that? If in one day that's what happens, you know, we're making out really well. So that's visually what you're seeing is profits to the, as we go up to the right. And of course, in the world of options, you know, you can make an, you know, the, the amount of money you can make is infinite. As the price rises, it can just go to infinity and your profits uh, would be, you know, uh, 
go off to infinity as well. However, if the market goes down, let's say it goes down 1.7% to uh, 208. Well, now you're down $143 there, you know, to about right there. So you're seeing what your risk is if the market goes down, and what your gains are if the market goes up. Now, that's in today's time frame, T plus zero days. Okay, now, watch this, though. There's another line right underneath it. This is the T plus eight. That's eight days in the future. Now, look real carefully. We're going from today's line down to the eight days in the future. Do you see how the line is underneath it right there? That's the effect of time decay. That's the effect of time decay. Let's see. Andrej is asking, is the calculation of P&L based on the bid price or a... I can't really see the... or a mid price. That's, being, that's based on whatever um, slippage you have set up in option view. Right now I'm using the mid price between bid and ask. Okay? And you can adjust that in option view to include large amounts of slippage if you want. Or you can have no slippage thrown in. For purposes of teaching, I usually have no slippage, and in this case, little or no commissions, just to kind of make sure that the illustrations are, are obvious. But yes, you, you can have option view automatically build in to all of your calculations, levels of slippage and commissions. So you can see here then how these lines being separated reflect, the, reflect negative theta. This option's losing value in eight days. You're going to be underwater unless the darn thing moves, right? So let's go to the next slide here, and this is the eight-day number. You can see in eight days, if the price goes up to 212, well, we're still losing money here. That's the P&L underneath there. The daily theta, you can see eight bucks a day now, you know, hitting our position. That's not too good, but this is the graph that you see. And if, of course, it doesn't move at all, let's go to the expiration line here. That's the expiration, T plus 16, expiration 16 days. If the market doesn't move at all, well, we're going to lose, we're going to be down quite a bit there. All right, but our loss is limited, and, of course, it's going to have to go up past 213 and a half, you know, to, for us to make some money there. Okay, so... I wanted to point out to those of you aficionados of options trading programs, I just want to make sure you understand that the, the first, the, you know, today's line and the expiration line are very easy to model. Okay? And there's lots of broker platforms out there and what, what I would call, you know, beginner type programs that just throw you these lines and nothing else. Because it's easy to paint a picture of today. You just assume that every option's implied volatility will remain what it is today. And at expiration, well, there is no time premium. And so you have either extrinsic or, or no value. There's no time premium. It's the, an option's value is either zero or it's intrinsic value. That's easy to program. It's easy to make an options program like this. Now, here's what gets difficult. It's when you're trying to calculate your profit and loss sometime between today and expiration. That gets really difficult. And this is where Option View has occupied a niche since 1983 when we started, where we're modeling and we're trying to throw in all the variables that can fit into here and calculate in eight days before expiration, you know, halfway between now and expiration. How much can we make or lose? Well, now you have to try and calculate what the implied volatilities are going to be eight days in the future. If in the S&Ps, let me ask you a question. If the S&Ps crash, you know, or go, you go down 3% in eight days, all right, what's going to happen to the VIX? Those of you that follow the markets, the implied volatility of the options is going to rise. And if the market goes up 3% in eight days, blasts off, what happens to the VIX then? It comes down. Implied volatility drops. And so you want a program like this, it's going to factor in the likely shift in implied volatilities there, right? 
And so in this line between now and expiration, this is where Option View has hung its hat, is that we, have, we really go to great lengths to make this as accurate as possible for the advanced options trader. All right. Whew, let me get a sip of coffee. Just a second. We're going to get to those tr the trading strategies now that we've covered the foundational concepts. One moment. All right, let's go into the non-directional type trades. We mean by non-directional is we're talking about making money no matter which way the market can go. All right, now here was a long call set eight days in the future. This is a long call. What if I added on a long put? What would the long put look like if I added it to this? All right, well, with a long call, we're making money if the market goes to the right and goes up. If I added a long put, I think it's safe to say it'll look something like this, where we're making money if the market goes to the left and goes down. And we might have a little no man's land here where we lose money. Okay, so that's what I want to show you first, just to get the concept and thinking of what non-directional trading looks like. So you have a long call that I just showed you for $219 or $219. Uh, each contract. Here's the 211 put at a buck 70. Okay, it would cost 170 total to buy it. Now, if I propose to Option View buying both of these, and I click the Analyze button, this is what you get, and this is what I just showed you here. You have the the call part that's making money as the market goes to the right, and then the put starts making money if the market goes too far to the left and goes past a certain break-even point. Now, in eight days, you have a lot of time decay wearing on the position. So here's where we are now. In eight days, you have this time decay wearing away on it, and we would be down about 30% of our capital in eight days if the market just stayed there and did nothing. All right, so this is an example of making money no matter which way the market goes. Now, this is called a long straddle. A long straddle, meaning we're buying a long call, we're buying a call and a put. What would a short straddle look like? If you can just picture, if this is long, well, we're making money if it goes too far to the left or right. We invert this, and I think, here, let me just change colors quick. If we invert this, can you imagine it would look something like that? Where instead of losing money if it stays near where it's at, now we're going to make money if it stays where it's at. And we would lose if it gets too far out. So let me propose a short straddle, and boom, there it is. Okay, And this is the shape, generally, that the professional off-the-floor traders are using to make money. They're selling premium. And every single day that goes by, they put a little bit of money in their pocket. And here's an eight-day profit if the market doesn't move. And as, if the market does begin to go to the, too far to the right or left, well, then they take action. This is what we do as professional options traders, primarily is sell premium like this. We make money if the market doesn't move much. Those are good days. And if the market does move, well, then there's things that we do. And this is the general theme that you're going to see in the world of high-level professional options trading and where I'm going to say that the individual investors and traders who have been at this for years and years and they're still around, this is what they're doing, is something, a variation on this shape of a risk graph where it's, it's shaped just like that, like a round in the desert kind of a thing. You know, one of those pyramids in Nebraska. Or something like that. Go ahead and, you know, it's, it's just a curve like that. All right, now, how can we get those curves? How can we get this kind of a shape? All right, well, a short straddle is an interesting one. It costs a lot of money, though. To sell calls and puts, you can have portfolio margining and maybe, you know, do better. But if you're at reg T margining with your broker, all right, then this is just too much money. Uh, and you're not going to your yield is going to be pretty small. So you can just see under a reg T margining level in eight days, if the market doesn't move, well, you've made three percent. And I'm going to show you strategies where the, the yields are much, much better because 
instead of selling these options just short call, short put, and in, in what we would call a naked type sense, we're going to cover those options by selling a call here, buying a call there. Selling a put here, buying a put there, and covering those shorts. And then when you cover those short options, the reg T margining kicks in and you, your yields grow huge compared to this. Can you do this kind of trade sell a straddle with an IRA? Oh, no. Not many brokers are going to let you do that in an IRA. I'll be honest. Um, you'd certainly want to ask your broker about that, but we really recommend doing a strategy other than short straddles. I'm only showing you this short straddle because of the shape. I'm just leading you into this discussion of the shape here. The, the, you know, the, the amount here is just too extreme. Your yield of 3% in eight days on this 16-day, that's just terrible. So let me show you how we come, you know, get around this. This is called an iron butterfly. And the best way to describe this is saying that we're going to go to the calls and we're going to do an at-the-money call credit spread. And, that's the plus, and we're going to go and do a put credit spread at the money as well. Now, by at the money, I mean we're going to sell premium at the money. We're going to have our credit spread such that the short option is at the at the money strike. So let me show you this. And then uh, well, we're moving along pretty good here. Okay. So here is a, a, an, an iron butterfly, an at the money call credit spread. What do I mean by a call credit spread? An at the money. Here is the at the money, 211. We're going to sell that one. Okay. Now remember, we said that we needed to cover it. We can't just sell that naked, or else the net requirements here go into the thousands of dollars. Okay. So we're going to cover that by coming out here, three strikes, and buying. This is a credit spread. Credit meaning that we're collecting $219 shelling out $63, and the rest of it is a credit to us. The rest of it is a credit to us, a credit spread. Kind of like insurance a little bit. Kind of like insurance. You know, insurance companies will sell insurance, and then what do they do? They go and, and purchase reinsurance, and they capture the spread. And it, it, you know, that concept pertains well to options. You know, given that so many long fund holders, you know, long uh, stockholders employ protected puts, they're buying insurance. It's a great little analogy. So we have this credit spread going. Now let's go to the puts, and we're going to sell premium at the same strike. We collect $170. We come out of the money here and buy. So we have a credit spread going on here. All right, now. This is technically called a broken wing butterfly. It's a butterfly because the short strikes are at the same uh, uh, strike level, at 211. It's broken wing because the distance of the longs is different from the calls to the puts. But you know what? If your broker is worth his weight in salt, and all of, most of them now have uh, conformed to the FINRA allowances, your broker is only going to look at this five-point difference and that'll be the gross requirement here. And when you add the credit from here and here, it adds up to a cash flow of 268. Your net requirement from your broker should be the farthest spread here minus the total credit is equal to the net requirement. Okay, now you can see how this is going to be much better from a yield perspective, right? You're selling that, remember that naked straddle that costs $4,000 in Reg T to put on? Here you're selling the same options, and your only requirement is $232. That's pretty good. All right, so that this is an iron butterfly. It's technically a broken wing one, and we like to break the wing so that we can make it what's called delta neutral, but that discussion is for another time, particularly in our mentoring program. But suffice to say, you're here now on this T plus zero line, 
in eight days will be up right here. And we have roughly the same, well, it's a little bit leaning. You know, the, the right side break even is a little farther away than the short side break even. It's leaning a little so that you can make a little bit more money, you know, if it leans to the right a little bit. More allowance on the right. You know, these non-directional strategies, very seldom you're going to be able to have it perfectly symmetrical left to right where your delta balance perfectly from here, you know, onward in time as we model it out, okay? It's going to be, you know, shaded a little bitter in either direction. So, but that, this is an iron butterfly with a broken wing, but the general shape here that you can see, this is the general shape that we have. And you can see in eight days, you're going to make a lot more than just 3%. I mean, here it's up looking, well, yeah, I mean, if your P&L is at $40 divided by 232, I mean, you're looking at, you know, 15% or more real easily here from a yield perspective. Okay, so this is one way to acquire that general shape. Now, if the market moves too far in either direction, look at this, you can start going down pretty close, you know, you can start going down and you can start losing money here. And so what we teach in our mentoring, and you're going to want to have a plan for dealing with these edges out here. All right, and we have our own protocol for dealing with that. Some folks teach adjustments. We have mentors that, you know, we, we, have, we use hard stops, but we have mentors also that like to do adjustments and do it more discretionarily. Uh, in our inside wire, we have a firm set of rules as to exactly what to do, and we teach those, and those are the returns I just showed you here, you know, at the beginning of the presentation. But this is an introduction to what a broken wing butterfly looks like. And so you can see it, you can make money in either direction so long as it doesn't move too far and too fast. Okie dokie. Now, what's another way of acquiring the general shape here? Okay, this is called an iron condor. An iron condor. Now, this is an, instead of an at the money credit spread, this is an out of the money call credit spread plus an out of the money put credit spread. Okay, let's look at what that looks like. Same matrix, we're coming farther out in time a little bit, but we're going out of the money in the puts, and we're going a little further out of the money in the calls, and we're doing a two-point spread in each one. Let's look at the puts. We're selling this 209 for a buck 92, buying this one for a buck 45. So, you know, we're selling insurance to someone that's buying a put. We're selling that put for a buck ninety-two, and just like an insurance company, we're selling a, a you know we're selling a policy. Now we're going to go to our reinsurance company and buy a reinsurance policy down here, and we're going to capture the spread. See that forty-five or about forty-seven cents. Okay, that's what we're collecting is forty-seven cents. 47 bucks, we get, you know, that's our credit that we get. These both expire worthless. Let's come out in the calls here. 95 and 38. We're selling this call, going further out and buying, and we're capturing that spread. So when you add this spread, what is that, 57 cents plus the other brings us to a buck 04 is our total credit. That's our total credit. So we're at a two-point spread, $200 minus this credit gives us a net requirement of only $96. Now, I'm just using one lots. Throw in the zeros that you want here. You get the picture. Spiders are the most liquid markets in the world here. Penny-wide spreads on most of these options. It's phenomenal. But there you go. This is a condor. This is what we call a condor. Two out-of-the-money credit spreads. Now, when we analyze it, we're going to get, again, that general shape. This is the general shape that we get. And this is the, I'm going to call it the professional shape. All right? That's what you want. And with a condor, you start here, and over time, here it's taking us 15 days to come up to that 30% mark. Okay? And, um, of course, we're starting out, you can see the line isn't particularly flat. It's leaning, we call delta short. 
that's for another discussion. But you get a, the feel that the shape is generally the same, where that there's that curve there. And every single day that goes by, we work our way up. Now, in option view, what's cool is this little feature. I'm going to show you this feature here. Which is better, the butterfly or the condor? The butterfly or the condor? Well, we can use this feature called superimpose, and we can then take both trades and look at them. And what I'm going to do is look at both trades as of eight days in the future. Even though the broken wing butterfly has 16 days to expiration, this condor has 30 days to expiration. I can look at both positions as of eight days in the future, like I am now, and compare them. And I can make a decision. Well, if I'm leaning a little short, if I'm not sure the market's going to stay where it, if I'm worried it might go down, I might lean on the condor. If, I, if I'm pretty sure the market's going to be stable, maybe have a little more edge to the upside, well, then I might pick the butterfly. But in this way, through option view superimpose button, I can superimpose, theoretically, an unlimited number of trades and look at those trades in any time frame in the future. It's awesome. All right, now, here's something that's a problem. Look at this. This condor requires only $96 to put on. Remember what the butterfly was? $232. Right? So when I look at this, and I'm looking at the profit levels of the condor versus the butterfly, the, you know, I'm not so much, I, I, my real concern is what is the yield on my capital? The condor requires less than half of the butterfly. So what I want to do then is instead of using a vertical axis here of my dollar amount of profit, I'm going to turn that to yield. Boom. And now I'm comparing the yield on my capital. So now I'm comparing apples to apples. I can see that from a yield perspective, that condor in eight days, this is it's, it's, it's pretty much like what the butterfly is, but I'm leaning to the south a little bit. I'd have to have a little bit more of a bearish perspective. The butterfly is leaning a little bit north. Okay, but I wanted to point that out because I, you know, again, to be honest, Option View has hung its hat on high end analytics. This eight day line you see here has everything, it can have everything, including the kitchen sink, all the shifts involved, the, the slippage, the commissions, going out in time before expiration, between today and expiration, you're getting as accurate of a look as you'll get from anybody in the industry. All right. So I wanted to point that out. Okay, so that involves the professionals selling option premium, just an introduction to the strategies. Condors and butters are pretty much what you'll see out there. And the folks that are in this business year after year after year are doing something along those two themes. Now, something we teach in our level three is a calendar spread because there's a demand for calendar spread education. And we used to teach a spread that was kind of like the earning or the income type butterfly condor. The last few years have been brutal on income type calendar trade. And so what we have done here at Option View is our chief programmer, Len Yates, has put into Option View something that no one else has, and that is a high level of modeling related to earnings earnings and we're very proud of this because we're the first to arrive here at this high-end level and I'm going to show you this we call it an earnings calendar now a calendar spread involves selling a near-term call or put and then going farther out in time and, and go and buying a farther term call or put it's you, you know if you sell a call you're gonna buy a call sell a put you buy of the same type and the same strike price. All right, you sell a near month call, buy a farther term call. Okay, if you sell a nearer term put, then you get the same strike. You go and buy a put at the same strike price. This is a calendar spread. Now we're going to look at calendar spreads centered around earnings announcements. 
centered around, now why in the world would you want to do that? Well, let's take an example. This is the best way I have for explaining this. Let's take Google. And as a mentoring student, you would have access to this here. It's called our Stock Analysis Report. And what we do is we show you the history of Google's earnings or any stock. On that day that earnings came out, we tell you if it came out after the market closed or before the market open. If it came out after the market closed, then you're going to want to look at the next day percent change because the next day it's going to gap. Right? When a stock comes out with earnings, it tends to gap the next day. Or if it comes out with earnings that morning, then at the open it gaps the same day. But you could see the history then of Google's gapping on earnings. Looks like roughly, say, one to three and a half percent, something like that. All right, now let's go and explore this one right here, January 29th, 2015. And in option view, we have something called back trader. We can go back in time. To January 29th, and we're going. And I use Option Views Back Trader. I'm going to, I'm going to go to that day, on the close just before earnings were announced. Shortly thereafter, so if I arrived in the market, say 15, 10, 15 minutes before close, what would I see? These are the numbers I would see. And I want to just show you here that in the near week, Google's coming out with earnings right away, so it's going to close here. And then earnings are coming out. We know it's going to gap the next morning. How are the options priced? Here's the MIVs of the front week options. Look at this, in the 70% level. Okay, Here it's in the 38 level. Now why do you have these differences? Why do you have these differences? Well, here's why. The market knows Google is going to gap, right? It's historically Google has gapped on earnings. There is an expectation Google is going to gap the next morning. And so built into all these option prices, all right, top to bottom, is a sliver of time premium to account for that likely gap. The rest of the time premium is the normal time premium, but there's a nice little chunk related to the likelihood that Google is going to gap. Now that chunk that sits here, let's say in these distant options, that's the same dollar amount chunk that's going to exist in these front ones. Well, these front ones only have two days of time left. So when you run that through the Black-Scholes model, that, big, that, that chunk of likely time decay that's going to go bye-bye in a day, that chunk is when you reflect it out in terms of implied volatility on an annualized basis with two days to go, that ends up being a big fat number there. See that? And as the time then goes higher, the number comes down. But you can see here, we call this a horizontal skew. Horizontal meaning left to right, right to left. There is a difference in implied volatility from one week to the next week expiration to the monthly to the weekly going on down. Now here's what's cool. Option view is going to look at these numbers. It's going to look at the historical gaps in Google. It's going to look at the historical movement of Google as a stock and it is going to predict where these implied volatilities are going to be after earnings are announced. Those of you that are tapped into earnings that's pretty revolutionary in the world of option software because no one has it except us. Option, once again, option view will predict and model this calendar spread in light of the likely shift in volatilities. Where are these implied volatilities going to go after earnings comes out? They're going to plummet. Where are they going to plummet to? That's the question. So let me model this using option views Highly, highly sophisticated, we call it variable model, and here it is. Again, we have the professional looking shape. Okay, I'm looking one day into the future. One day into the future, you see that? An option view is calculating that when that vol shift happens, 
All right? It is modeling an expected event, T plus 1, one day into the future. And it will automatically dial up T plus 1 in this chart. And it shows you if there's no gap at all, or let's say it, gap, let's say it goes to 510. Okay? It's going to then bring in a yield of 94% on the capital required to put on that calendar spread. 94% yield isn't bad. However, we know it's very likely Google is going to gap, and it can gap, uh, historically it's gapped 3.5% or so. And in this case, even if it gaps 3.5%, look at that, we're still going to make money. So this looks like it might be a pretty good situation here. Given that Google is gapped typically 1% to 3.5%, we had a little 9 you know, from, you know, many, many months ago. But Google here, interestingly, uh, shows up, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, on Option View's earnings module. We have an earnings module that lists opportunities just like this. Let's look at what happened in the next day. Okay, Google did gap. It went to about 525. It did about a 3.4%. It actually technically opened 1% and then it screened real quick up to that 3 points. So let's say that you weren't able to get out till it arrived at that 3.4% move there at 525. Okay? And there it is. Google went up here to 525 real quick and we would have made about 50% on our money overnight that way. Interestingly, Google was listed as a good candidate for this kind of, uh, kind of a, a strategy in Option View's earnings module. It's a little module you can purchase or le excuse me, lease with Option View when you get Option View. It's an add-on in terms of getting lists of opportunities like this. But this is the kind of calendar we like to focus on are these earnings calendars just like this. Okay, so let me see. What's the next slide? Okay, so here, eh, it's kind of fuzzy. I apologize. But look at this. This is the 9 o'clock the next day. Look at these volatilities. They were here at 38%, and they went to, I, I just dialed up the previous day's chart there. It went from 38 to 18, and our long went from 25 down to 20. So the, the, these long three, three lot, this lost some money, but the one here going, you know, plummeting from 38% IV down to 18, this made a lot more money. All in all, we made $528 on 846 required. Not too bad. Okay, but again, it did move, but it didn't move enough that we lost money there. So that's the earnings calendar. All right, does it also include the IV crush in the long options? Rob, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Option, you know, when you look at this, like, when you look at this graph, it is calculating, you can kind of see, it kind of, it did a pretty good job here of about 50% gain. It went to 525, and it's modeling it almost on the button. It, it came to a 50% yield. I'm looking over here. If this line's at 41 it pretty much nailed the modeling on that. See that? It hit about a 50% yield right there. Nice. But you're, yes, it does. And also, Rob, it in, you, know, you can model it. It'll include modeling the buildup going to earnings. And then as an aside, um, yeah, IV crushing the longs is where most people lose money with calendars. And you need a that's it. It's, you do need to have something that calculates that and is going to be in the ballpark. But this includes both the vol crush across the board. Okay? And of course, with level three uh, mentoring, you'll get a complete explanation of the modeling that goes into this and you know all, what's under the hood and all that fun stuff. Okay? All right. So those are the strategies that we teach in level three. A good introduction. Let me quickly, and you can ask questions. I'm missing the Jan 31 option chain in the next slide. Why isn't it there? The Jan 31, where are we looking? Oh, weekly five. Oh, it's because I, um, I wanted to blow it up. No, I just chose that particular size 
So, because it was a little blurred, I just blew it up so I could get it all in the screen and and get it as too small a font, in my opinion. I don't, you know, that's why. Um, I mean, clearly, it would be a, at a lower vol out there, no question. Well, actually, it's on Friday. It would be zero. There would be no days left. It would be the the MIVs would be scratched out there, Andre. Okay. Uh, Sal, does it take into account considerations Vanna and Voma for farther out of the money options? Me, I mean, can it predict out of the money options ready to explode? Out of the money options ready to explode on on an earnings calculation? Is that what you mean in the in the light of earnings? It's going to model likely shifts in vol when earnings come out. Okay. Now, Sal, it's also going to include building up to earnings the options that are going to grow in implied volatility as earnings comes towards us in time. And in those situations, you're going to have certain uh, option periods that are going to really, their MIVs are going to really get higher and higher as earnings come up, come closer and closer. And that is something that needs to be factored in too. But in terms of the vol after earnings comes out, you pretty much see a crush, um, you know, in vol. Okay, I'll keep answering the questions as we go. Let me just show you earnings module. I wanted to point this out in the earnings module that we have. There are five strategies that it gives you. It gives you lists of stocks. It's kind of like an advisory. There's a built-in algorithm coming from us. We include the prime non-movers, the likely calendar type candidates. All right, and if you're at all interested, you can call and talk to one of our reps. Since vol is going to drop, just the influence of vol will need to decrease all options prices. Oh, since vol is going to drop, just the influence of vol will... Okay, that's coming from option view. It's coming from Jim. The only ones that increase in value is due to the price change. So if you, well, yeah, Sal, yeah, Sal, Jim is just chiming in here. Option view can help you find the best in the money options that are going to explode in case of a big gap. Okay, option view can help you find the ones that will make you the most money if you have a big, big move. And we have something called Trade Finder that'll help you put in your prediction for a big gap which options are going to make you the most money. An option view will locate the exact one, take the amount of money you want to invest, it'll tell you the number of contracts to put on this option if there's a big explosion. Folks, before we wrap it up, I want to make sure you know that we have a level three here that covers issues of volatility, my own live volatility indicator. We have two sections on condors, the calendars, the butterflies I showed you, and then one on money management. We have a great team of folks that are professionally trading these approaches. They'll hold your hand and make sure you understand all these concepts in level three. You get with these an hour with them for each of those seven lessons. These are private lessons recorded so you can go back and review it, review your lesson. We send you the recording. The curriculum is in PDF format so you can print it out. We'll go over your live trades in the context of our money management models and in an educational context, but we'll look at what you're currently doing. You get option view seven. You get access to my Wednesday morning market huddle for an hour. Every Wednesday morning, I go over the market and give some ideas. Stock analysis report. There's the inside wire, 300 plus hours of me going through the various research I've done for the last six years. Also, we just added this. This is cool. Archived live trading sessions. You know how you'll see option educators say, hey, come join us live. We're going to trade live, and you can watch us trade. Well, and usually you go in there, and what do they do? Well, they'll, they'll put on a butterfly, put on a calendar. Nothing real juicy about taking profits or rolling, right? So, and we're not day traders here either. So we can't really say, hey, come watch us at the open. We're going to trade, right? So what we did is we just told our mentors, look, when you're going to manage your money and do a roll, can you just turn on the recorder, talk into the mic, explain to the students what you're thinking, what you're going to do. Are you going to scale out? Are you going to scale in? 
Are you going to roll out, roll in, take profits, take losses? Just walk us through what you're doing. Put on the trade and then help us understand how you're going to execute that order. How are you going to cave? You know, are you going to demand midpoint between bid and ask? And then are you going to cave? And what's your strategy for caving in, getting the order filled? And so our mentors have been amassing these recordings. They're awesome. This is a great value-added feature that I think should be of great interest to you as, as, a, as someone that really wants to get to a, the highest level of a, really a professional grade options trader. All right. Here's the pricing. How much does all this cost and what specials are we running right now? Mentoring pricing. We have level one, which is more for the long holding, folks long, holding long stock that want to do overlays, like I talked about. Level two is for the directional spread traders. Okay, the, you combine technical analysis with directional option spread trading. Level three is what I just showed you. Condors, butters, calendars. We'll go into huge detail. Again, seven classes here that I pointed out to you. We combine all of these for a level four. Okay, if you want a discount on level four. Level five are all these concepts in the world of futures. Paul Forshoni is one of our mentors. He does an awesome job with Ken Dole in getting people to understand all these strategies related to futures, soybeans, corn, sugar, all that. And finally, we have the whole shooting match. Everything we have, $89.95. Now, we are having a May special. A May special, first of all, any level for $500 off, just through June 1st, any level take $500 off. Or if you want to combine levels, we have a nice little thing called May Countdown Special. So wow, this is kind of cool. If you want to combine levels two and three, okay, you can get it for $4,321.00. 4321. It's a little bit more of a saving than just taking $500 off each level. If you want level four, which is all of the levels combined, okay, it's five four three two one. Five four three two one, five thousand four hundred thirty two dollars and ten cents. That's a little bit more savings than taking fifteen hundred dollars off the, the, the actual big price there. Okay? Level five futures staying the same. Level six, okay. Well, you can get five hundred dollars off just the level, but if you get everything we have. Here it goes up the other way. Six, seven, eight, nine, and one cent. Okay? Countdown May special. So those are what we offer for the May special. Let's see any other questions. Okay. Uh, let's see. Is it options on futures or futures itself? Henrik, no. We are teaching you futures options trading. Futures options trading. The dynamics in futures options is a little bit different than stocks and indexes because the underlyings change from contract to contract. And you just have to be aware of that. And so we're teaching the concepts in the context and making it future specific. So it's definitely futures options. All right. Any other questions? Folks, that's it for me. If you, have quite, if you want to call and go over this, please call this number. You could talk to Karen or James. They'll be glad to go over all these specials with you and put together the package that you really need for where you're at. We would love to hear from you. And again, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And uh, till next time, thanks so much. Take care. Have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye.